All right, guys, I got everything cleaned up with my parts cleaner, and I'm ready to put this back together. Now, I was delayed for several weeks because originally I tore apart this aluminum diff case. You can see here I have the alloy one. But I had this aluminum diff case that I wanted to use. Now the problem is these diff cases are slightly different between the alloy and the aluminum as far as the sealing washers that uh, seal the drive cups. As you can see, one washer is quite larger than the other. So this larger one was part of this aluminum case and it just fits it just kind of fits in there like so I don't know if you can see that or not it fits in there like so there's no groove where the I don't know if you can see it the alloy case has a little groove for the smaller washer or o-ring, they're not really washers, they're o-rings. So, um, the problem is this uh, this is a King Motors part, this o-ring, and they are out of stock. And something's going on with King Motors, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I couldn't get these. So what I decided to do is abandon that for now and go ahead and rebuild using the alloy case. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Like I said, I got all my parts cleaned up. You can see here I got my washers that go in the, the bottom of the diff housing. And then you got your large bevel gears. You got your smaller bevel gears. You got your these bevel gear holders with washers. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get those back together. The first thing we got to do is, oh, one other thing. These, uh, these outer bearings that are on the outside. And anyway, I'm going to be replacing all the bearings in this uh, Baja build with this Fast Eddy HPI Baja Pro Series bearing kit. So all the bearings I'm replacing, not just the transmission and the differential, but these, a lot of times I'll be, you'll put some thread lock around the outside where this bearing race sits. Put some thread lock around there to hold this bearing in so it doesn't slip. Well, let me tell you, these can be a real bear to get off. I had a heck of a time getting these off. So, Secondly, there's a small bearing. Some of these come with sleeves instead of bearings, but there's a small bearing that goes on this outside. That would be this bearing right here. There's one that goes on the outside. They put the seal in, you put the bearing in, and there's also a one that goes on the inside. So we're gonna go ahead and get the seal in, the outer bearing, and the inner bearing and then we'll be ready to put this big outer bearing on. And then we'll put the drive cup in, the washer, put the bevel gear in, hold it in place with the uh, pin, bevel gear pins, which are these guys right here and there's a screw that goes in the case you can see it right there with an o-ring a small o-ring which is these right here i will be replacing all o-rings and this case gasket which holds the two cases together i've got a pack of these are genuine uh, hpi o-rings part number 75078 and from roven I've got new case gaskets. It's part number 65084. 
All right, so let's go ahead and get the bottom of this first case ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put my new, a lot of times these uh, O-rings, I like to put a little bit of uh, silicone uh, shock oil on them, lube them up. Just a little groove that fits down in there. Like so. That's kind of hard to see, but it's down in there. There's a groove that goes in. And we're going to go ahead and put our bearing in. Yeah, you want to make sure you get this bearing lined up as straight as you can. And I like to take something to fit over it and just tap it down slightly until you get it down in there. Nice and flush. Don't pound too hard. Just go nice and easy till you get it seated. Pretty much once that's flush, oh, sorry about that. Once that's flush, you're done. So we're going to go ahead and put a second bearing on the inside. Our second bearing goes down in there, so we're going to put it in the same way. Try to get this as straight as you can. If you get these cocked and you start, if you get these cocked, and you start to pound them down in, that'll be a heck of a time getting them down in. Now this one's a little easier to get in. I can almost press it in with my fingers. We're just gonna give it a couple of taps to make sure it's seated. Okay, and that's our inner bearing, outer bearing. All right, now we're gonna have to put our big bearing on. So it's up to you guys whether you wanna put a little bit of Loctite around this or not. I'm probably gonna put a, a, just a tiny coating around and then uh, we'll have to seat, this bearing is tight. We'll have to seat it the same way. Now this is bigger. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use a, a socket and uh, just be gentle. Take your time with this. Do not be in a hurry to seat these bearings. Before you put your blue Loctite on, make sure this is clean out here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of de degreaser. Take a little bit of blue Loctite. I'm just gonna put a film of it on here. That's it. Again, get this bearing started straight. Just kind of push on it from all angles to get it started. You hear that start to go down in there? Actually, that Loctite will help you get it down in there. Then you can use a socket to get it the rest of the way. Again, you want to get this flush like the other one. All right, and there we have it. There's your bearing, outer bearing on. Nice and smooth. I'm going to go ahead and get the other uh, side of the housing done and I'll be right back. All right, we got uh, we got our bearings in both halves of the case. Now you want to start rebuilding the case with see the difference in the case. 
you'll see the case has there's two different types of cases the case halves this one has no um, I don't know what you want to call it like a, a very tiny lip on it and this one's really fat so you want to start with this fat one first we're going to rebuild this first then we'll put this on and then then our gear goes over top of that one with no lip so we want to do it in that order so we'll start with this one first first thing we want to do is we want to put our washer down inside just lays down there in the grooves can't really get it wrong next thing you want to do is put one of our diff cups up through now before you put this up through put a bunch of uh, silicone diff oil on this to get it good and lubed up just kind of turn it and push push up through make sure that that inner bearing did not push out go ahead and put your washer back down inside there next thing we're going to want to do is take one of the pins push it through the hole in the outer part of the case and through the through the uh, you might need a little screwdriver to help you push it down through the the diff cup like so okay now that we got our pin in now we got to put our big bevel gear down in there to get it sit on that pin once we have it sitting on that pin we'll go ahead and lock that pin down with the uh, bolt through the top of the through the top of the diff cup I just work her down in there like so till you get it then you take your little bolt which goes down through the top I like to put a little bit of thread lock on this manual says you don't need it but I like it looks like uh, three millimeter All right, last thing we got to do is uh, seal off that pinhole with this screw here. And we're going to put a new, uh, these are tiny, new rubber O-ring on that as well. Make sure you put some Loctite on. I'm going to go ahead and get that in. And I'm going to do the same thing now um, as far as assembly to the other end of the diff housing. When I get that done we'll come back to this housing and we will put in our other smaller bevel gears and then get ready to fill it with fluid. So I'll be right back. Alright now we're ready to put our smaller bevel gears in. So we're going to go ahead and take one of the mounting plates, the washer on the back and the plastic on the front, place the gear in there and there's a flat side and if you can see that and a rounded side rounded side goes to the top with this metal washer in the back so you just want to slide it down in like so so it seats down in there and then we'll do that for another one opposite slider down in there I'll take one of your bevel gear shafts and stick it through. Just kind of got to fish it through there like so. Make sure the groove 
is facing up and we're going to do the same thing on this side with the other set. Like so. Number two. And like so. We're going to get a axle in here. You have to lift up a little bit on this to get it in. You should just feel that lock in place. You can kind of test it. Make sure that gets set down in there. They should all turn like so. Okay, there we go. Now we're ready to fill with fluid. Now I think the, I'm not sure about the Roven and the King Motors, but I think the HPI comes with like a thousand uh, dip fluid. So uh, I got some 2,000 and some five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try some five out to start because I'm probably gonna run this in the grass, in the dirt, on the street. I'm gonna try five out and see what that's like, but uh, let's go ahead and get this thing filled. Now I'll probably fill it to over the top, just over the top of those, um, with the cross in here. That should be uh, good. So let's go ahead and get it filled. Should be about good right there. I can't see that, but it's right at the it's right at the top there. So, all right. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, get this gasket on. What I like to do with my gaskets is take a little bit of silicone oil shock oil and just uh, lube them just get some lube on them get that down over there all right now we're ready to put our second half of the housing on let's go ahead and get this section on Like so. All right, next thing to do is to put our drive gear on. Seat down in there. All right, we got our four bolts to hold it down. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and make sure these are clean. I've already cleaned these up and my uh, and my cases, so there's no grease. Lock blue lock tight. And um, we're going to torque these down, you know, like an across this pattern, an across pattern. So we're not going to tighten one and tighten the other. So we're going to just uh, slowly snug these up. Going to set this as low as it goes on the torque and get each one set. Just snugging each one down a little bit. All right. All right. There's our differential rebuilt. I'm 
just kind of pushing that bearing down in there it's kind of tight I'm just going to go ahead and just tap it a little bit get our lay shaft out of the way Alright, just be gentle tapping that down in there so you know when you got it in. I know it's hard to see, but this should be flush. This bearing should be flush, no lip sticking up. So you know you got that in right. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other bearing on the other uh, side of the case in. I'll be right back. Alright, I got my other bearing in right here. So that's our lay shaft bearings. We're gonna go ahead and put these large bearings in right here, and then we'll be able to put. Uh, everything back together all right here's our first bearing down in let's get the other half of our case that would be this bearing and that one's down in those weren't super tight All right, now we can go ahead and put our gears on and our lay shaft in. We're going to go ahead and uh, put this gear down on here like so. And then our lay shaft goes through. Like so. All right, so we got that. So then our differential bearing will fit down in that spot. Go ahead and seat that down in there. Like that. Don't seem to be seating in there, right? Let's get that down in there. There we go. Now she's down in there. Just going to go ahead and check that for movement. I'm going to put this side of the case on just temporarily, make sure everything is fitting perfectly. And then, uh, then we'll come back and we'll, we'll lube up these gears. All right, just going to go ahead and uh, slide this on. These can be a little tricky to get back together, but. Just kind of work it back and forth until you get everything seated properly. All right, keep working that back and forth till you get it together. I'm just going to go ahead and everything seems nice and smooth without any lubes. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull the case back apart and we're going to lube up the, the gears. All right, guys, got my case back apart. Everything seems to be fitting nice and smooth, so we're going to go ahead and uh, lube up the differential gear I'll probably pull this back out and then uh, lube it and then we're going to lube these up too what we're going to be using today is the team fast eddy dog bone and transmission grease this stuff is uh, <laughs> this stuff is just awesome I don't know this is like the tackiest grease ever this is really awesome for these. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and look Look how that is. It is just unbelievable. Sticky. I'm just going to go ahead and put some on. It's almost like, if you guys have never used it, like, uh, Super wet chewing gum. <laughs> it is so sticky. It's unbelievable. All right, look at that. Look how stringy. Look how stringy. Look at that. Just look how sticky that is. Hear it. You know you got some good stuff when you're hearing that. 
All right, I'm going to finish lubing this up, and I'll be back to put it back together. All right, we got our nut back on, lay shaft nut, and that's it. Hope you guys uh, that want to rebuild yours got some information out of that. That was the first time I've done one on the on the Baja, so I've done plenty of other differentials, you know, old one tenth scale e words and whatnot. So pretty much all pretty much the same there's not a whole lot of difference between them uh, just bigger of course but uh, just love that team fast Eddie so yeah if you have any questions or anything about this you know uh, drop me a comment below I'll answer as best I can so I'm anxious to see what this 500 uh, yeah 500 5000 uh, diff fluid is like so um, guys tell me that uh, of course the, the higher the diff fluid in these the less uh, turning ability you'll get so like I said I think HPI I'm not sure Roven but I think HPI is a thousand I have some two thousand some five thousand I decided to put some five thousand in I'm like a see what that's gonna be like all right, like I said, leave me a comment below. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, guys. Till uh, next time, I'm going to leave you with this verse. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. So long.